Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today I'm going to talk to you about the Most Fun Pro. Stick around. Welcome back makers. So a couple of months ago, Most Fun got in touch with me and asked me if I would like to review the Most Fun Pro right here. I had never heard of it, so instantly I started doing a bit of research online to see exactly what kind of printer it was. It turns out that the Most Fun Pro was on a Kickstarter campaign a couple of years ago and only started recently delivering to its backers. Back when the Kickstarter campaign launched, it touted quite a few features which got a lot of attention and got a lot of people excited. So needless to say, it was a successful campaign. Now some specs about the printer. The printer has a build volume of 220 on the X, 180 on the Y and 160 on the Z axis. It is a true Core XY printer and also runs on an Intel Edison mainboard, which supposedly makes it quite powerful. While it does have an SD card slot, a USB port at the back and a mini USB also on the front, it cannot be tethered. And the reason for that is because it does come included with Wi-Fi connectivity. This means that the Most Fun Pro can be connected either as an access point where you can connect to it directly or you can make it part of your local area network where you can access it for multiple PCs at the same time. It does come pre-assembled to a certain extent. There are only a few little bits you have to install, including this purge bucket, which uh, we'll get to in a bit, and also a filament guide. The printer does have an aluminum frame and the actual core of the aluminum is all welded for maximum rigidity. It also comes with a heated removable build plate, an internal camera so you can monitor your prints while you're not next to the printer, and assisted bed leveling. Now getting the printer to work right out of the box wasn't actually that difficult. It was purely a matter of me trying to figure out how to set the language to English because it did come as Chinese. But once that was done, all I had to do is start the auto leveling process. All you do is press a button. A servo switch will come down from next to the nozzle, which has a limit switch attached to it. It takes four different points on the heat bed to see the leveling of it, then moves on to the back left corner and the nozzle will touch a contact point. So it will let the printer know the height of the nozzle from the build plate. However, once this is done, the nozzle will move on to the center of the build plate so you can fine tune it with the usual piece of paper method. Now, if that's not enough, it also has four screws under the build plate so you can adjust it manually. The purge bucket also holds a small wire brush, which will um, clean the nozzle every time you start a new print. Now, as you can see in front of me, I've put this printer through quite a lot of um, prints. And the reason for that is that this printer costs $1,600. So it's not little money. So in order for me to make sure that that money is worth it, I have to make sure that I can print as many things as I can in the little time I have available with as many materials that I can get my hands on. The first print is always a 3D Benchy for me. And this is the result. This was printed with the PLA, with the green PLA that came with the printer. It printed out actually quite well. Now, considering the fact that all I did was go on Most Fun's website, download the Simplify 3D profile, and just run a standard print at 100 microns. This is one of the nicest benches I have ever printed, to be completely honest. So I was already starting to become quite impressed. Following that, I decided to throw in a couple of prints which are print in place, like this gear bearing, right here and also this fidget cube. Now, I wanted to test the tolerances. I wanted to see how well it could perform in such prints. And I have to say it did not let me down. The finish is quite beautiful. Granted, there are some places where it, it leaves a lot to be desired for the simple fact that some of these um, sides on the fidget cube are suspended in midair in order for them to be able to move freely. But other than that, everything worked out fine. 
and the gears moved and the fidget cube moved. So I was really happy. Next up, I threw in some Protopasta HTPLA V3, which was sent to me by Ben and Hawk3D Proto in order for me to do some more tolerance tests and also print some more functional parts for printers. So first I threw in these two parts right here, and these are part of the X carriage for the Trongsi X3. And I have to say they printed out quite beautifully. The layers lay down quite nicely. So I was extremely happy with that. Next up, I want to give the printer a bit of a challenge. So I printed this print and place jack from Thingiverse. I took this off the build plate and it just came off very easily. There was no resistance whatsoever on the print to actually start moving. Tolerances were printed perfectly on this and the print itself is actually quite gorgeous. Next up, I printed Maker's Muse tolerance test to see how far the tolerances are accurate. And up to 0.2 millimeter, it printed absolutely fine. There is some slight resistance, but it wasn't stuck. It didn't require any effort for me to free it. The 0.15 unfortunately was completely stuck. So I wasn't entirely disappointed with that because 0.2 is pretty much where an FDM printer should be. Once the HTPLA was done, I decided to throw in some PETG and print some functional parts, also replacement parts for the Hooklet Odin 1 3D printer, which I recently purchased. It printed out beautifully. This is the PETG from a printer pro. It came out really, really nice. The color is beautiful, fair enough, but the print itself, the quality of the print is actually quite good. So once again, this printer was making me quite happy. Having printed that, I also printed Daniel Nore's print and place wrench. And this was printed with Form Futura's um, R Titan. It printed out beautifully. It works fine. The um, extra bits that are part of the print came off quite easily and it works beautifully. So once again, result. Then I also decided to print something in ABS. So I threw in some filament of RABS and I printed these memory card holders or USB and SD card and micro SD card holders uh, from Thingiverse, which turned out absolutely great. I printed two because these kind of slide into each other. So you can have as many as you want and you just put them well, you just slide them into each other. So I was starting to be quite happy and I decided to go online and find some kind of test to see if there's some kind of standard test you could put printers through just to see the accuracy. And I found a website on Make where it showed several tests. You kind of start scoring each one to see how the printer performs. And most of these yellow ones are actually those you have fine details, you have resonance for X and Y, you have tolerances for X and Y as well, you have overhangs, bridging, and also this tower right here, which pretty much lets you see the consistency of the Z height. Every single print just performed beautifully. I had no failures whatsoever, and pretty much every single print got maximum points for quality apart from the bridging. It's not entirely bad. It could possibly perform better, but it's not disappointing at all. Now these six pieces over here form part of a puzzle, which I found on my manufacturing. The reason why I chose this puzzle to print is because it requires quite accurate tolerances. Now I have already proven that the printer has fairly good tolerances, but for this, it requires it to have quite good tolerances because the prints have to fit perfectly into each other and lock into place. And after doing a bit of searching online, I found how you can put it together. And that's like that. And it becomes this ball, which then becomes quite solid. And then all you have to do is give it to your friends and tell them, take this apart and go grab some popcorn and beer and watch it. Having tested all those materials, I decided to also try to print something in TPU. And I printed this Squirtle right here. And while it came okay, I wasn't thoroughly impressed with it. And I knew it was my settings. So what I did was I went on the most found website and they actually had a TPU profile for Simplify 3D. I downloaded it 
and then I printed this Squirtle. And this came out as good as I would imagine TPU can be printed because I haven't really had enough experience with TPU, but it printed quite well. Um, it's flexible, obviously, it's TPU. And I don't see any layer separations, very minimal stringing. So uh, yeah, so I was quite happy with that. I then also put some Polymaker Poly Plus PLA and I printed this print in place um, make robot, which turned out absolutely gorgeous and I am quite happy with. And finally, I then decided to put some a Printer Pro Copper PLA and I wanted to print something a bit organic. Everything which was mechanical was printing perfectly fine, but I wanted something organic, something which has a lot of curves because I want to see how it would behave. And in comes this T-Rex. I think this is one of the most beautiful prints I have ever printed. I am truly, truly impressed. This was printed at 100 microns. It printed in two pieces for the head, then the stand and also the base. And it's absolutely beautiful. So as you can see, I printed quite a lot of things. And I have to say that the quality of the prints really, really impressed me. And it's not just that, it's the ease of use. It, it took me a while to actually get used to the fact that I don't need to use an SD card. Having the user interface online, I can simply drag and drop files onto uh, the printer itself and just let it operate. And then if I want to see where the print is while I'm not away, I just have to connect through VPN and just check it out. So what do I like about this printer? The print quality. The print quality is absolutely amazing. I am in love with the quality so much so I will be using this to test the Palette Plus. I will be hooking it up to this um, to start running some tests. I also like the rigidity and also how easy it is to use. I uh, like the fact that most fun have prepared the Simplify 3D profile. There is also a Cura profile. There is also a dedicated uh, Cura software just for this printer. I also like the reliability. I have not had one one single failed print in the month or so I've been using this printer. Everything I throw at it, it just prints and it prints really well. I also like the fact that you can save prints midway. If you want to stop a print, you can actually save it and then resume it at another time. It also has a feature where if you have more than one build plate available to you, all you have to do is stop a print halfway and save it. Take the build plate off, put another build plate, do a more urgent print, finish that, and once it's done, just put back the other build plate and continue that print. So that feature is actually could come quite useful to someone who is maybe printing an order for a rushed customer. But not all that glitters is golden, unfortunately. While the printer has a save and resume function, it does not have a power off resume function. At this price, you kind of want that. Now, it was promised to be available during the Kickstarter campaign, so much so that during the Kickstarter campaign, this printer was supposed to come with a internal battery. So if the electricity goes off, the, the print head would move away from the print, shut down and then resume while uh, when the electricity comes back. Now, unfortunately, they had several bugs with this feature, so they couldn't implement it. Now, the Kickstarter backers were notified of this. They were offered a full refund if they did not want the printer. However, I still feel that that kind of function is necessary on this printer. It doesn't have to have an internal battery, but a power off resume function for a printer that costs $1,600, I believe should definitely be there. Another thing that I think it requires is more functionality during printing. During printing, when you are online, on the screen itself, you pretty much have nothing you can do to the print other than pause, resume, save, and stop. Online, when you go through the Wi-Fi, all you can do is pretty much adjust the temperatures of the heat bed and the hot end. I would expect it to have a bit more features in terms of fan speed adjustments, printing speed, or 
flow rate or any other of the basic features you find in any Marlin firmware. I do also feel that the purge bucket, while it's a great idea, it's kind of useless because the nozzle cannot actually go inside the purge bucket. It actually barely makes it to the wire brush to clean the nozzle. While it does clean it every single time, the purge bucket kind of does nothing. So ideally, I think you'd end up using it possibly to put very small tools in it. The camera quality also could possibly be better. Now, granted, there is not much you want the camera for other than just to see that the print is doing well and it's not failing. And if it's failing, you just stop the print so you don't waste any more filament. And it does that job. But having a bit more clarity in the photo just lets you know more if there's any minute detail that's not being printed properly. So um, you would still know and you could still be in time to uh, save some filament. I also kind of don't like the fact that in order to access the printer online, you have to be within the local area network of that printer. You cannot monitor it outside of that. However, that can be mitigated with simple VPN connection or possibly the Chrome Remote Desktop Viewer where you can connect to your PC and just bring up the, uh, the printer page. So what do I think about this printer? I, to be honest, I quite like it. My experience with this printer was quite fun. It was, it was great and while 1,600 euros is not cheap, it's quite a steep price. I can actually see this printer in a classroom, in an engineer's office, someone who has maybe a Etsy shop and wants consistently good quality prints. While for a hobbyist printer, this is this would be an absolutely great machine, it might be difficult to spend that much. So I can see this machine more for a prosumer category rather than a maker or a hobbyist. As always, I was not paid in any way, shape or form in order to do this review. Most Fun has sent me this printer in order for me to uh, get around and testing it and let everyone know my thoughts on it. Everything I said in this review is based on my own experience with this particular printer right here. And as you can see, I was actually quite happy with the results. If you want any more information on this printer, check out the links in the video description. That is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment in the, um, in the comment section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. If you didn't enjoy, tell me why not so I can fix it for next time. Share, subscribe, and as always, Happy making, guys.